Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Um, in this tutorial we are going to be talking about color correction. Now another term for color correction you might hear on um, in the industry or in some other tutorial uh, they call it color grading and essentially they're the same thing. Uh, it's just there's uh, some terms that are used interchangeable um, depending on who's saying it but color correction, color grading, they're not too much different. Uh, but the uh, the output, the effect that you're going for is exactly the same. It's to enhance the visual look of your final render or the final video. And you do that for two reasons. The first reason is that when you go and receive footage, um, what happens is that the film crew who is doing the live footage uh, or live filming, they set up cameras, they set up blockers and deflectors and reflectors and all these different items in the set um, live. They also have the cameras with the correct settings on the on the camera itself to have your white balance and all these other uh, technical aspects of filming. Um, and the they'll go ahead and film. They're trying to get the best quality possible live. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes there are some uh, problems that may occur. Like if you're filming outside, uh, the sunlight may change, especially the, depending on the time of day. So if you're filming in multiple scenes and you want to make sure that you're uh, getting the same kind of quality of the of the sunlight, color correction will come and fix that. So for example, if you're filming in a place where uh, you're filming outside, like at a beach or at a forest area, and then uh, you film there for about an hour, and then you have to move to another location in order to um, film the next scene, it may take some time to get to that location. Now, uh, occasionally what would happen is that they would call it a day, come back the next day and film at the same time, but that costs money. So then eventually what will happen is that they'll move to another location and film for another hour, but during that time the sun has changed positions and the color and the lighting has a, a change as well. So it would come to somebody like you to come and fix that by changing uh, the colors and the levels and the darkness and the brightness of the footage to match. The other reason is to uh, create a setting or mood in the visual aspect of whatever you're working on to match the story. So, for example, if you're working on a drama and, um, and it's like a police drama, a lot of times uh, they will desaturate the color to make it more serious looking. Um, or something like The Matrix, for example. Uh, the Matrix um, was an action film that was kind of serious. Uh, you know for its content but uh, the overall look of it was green and so there was a lot of green usage in the final footage um, on the other hand if you're doing something like a comedy or something that's lighthearted like a family film you tend to use brighter colors or more vibrant colors uh, so that it sets the mood for that as well so that you're in the right visual um, and also the mental um, place to to enjoy the story as is so the color correction aspect of, of our jobs is, is very important because it really um, you know, completes the final footage of the video, but also helps to tell us the story. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start here. I have After Effects open, and I'm going to double click in my bin. I'm going to bring in a couple of videos at different times that I have here. Um, the first one is going to be of this girl here. Um, so this is a, a video that I found. I'm going to bring into my new composition so that you can see here and uh, it's a girl holding a camera and I'm not going to use all this I actually just want the beginning part here where uh, just before it pans down to her camera so I don't need anything else but that so if I hit control shift D and I can split that footage I can go ahead and close that and I don't need all of this extra now I can go in my composition settings uh, to change that but I'll just leave it as it is press N as in Nancy and it will uh, bring in that time slider um, or that work area closer here. So you see that. Uh, so the lighter area, which is just to remind you guys, is where our work and video will be. And then the dark area, nothing happens. It's just going to be black. But when we hit play, um, it will play within this area here, this light gray area. And once it gets to the end, it will loop back to the beginning and replay that over again. So I didn't need all of that extra video. It's just in that one little spot right there. So uh, the next thing is, is I want to show you that, um, as you can see in the video, it's a very bright day wherever she is. She's looking what seems to be 
just outwards, maybe toward the window or whatnot. Uh, we have brightness on this side and a little bit of shadow on the other side. So now we can use that to our advantage. Uh, I want to change this all together. I want to make this look a little bit darker. Okay, make it more of a maybe a sunset, uh, sunset setting. And what's nice about this footage is that if we zoom into this girl here, hold down spacebar to move the uh, screen here. Uh, you can see that nothing's blown out. We can see a good amount of detail on her face. Okay, so we can see the wrinkles around her face and uh, there's some nice shadows in there. That's actually very helpful for us. So we're gonna come over to the top, go to effect. Oh, uh, first select your layer, go to effect, color correction, and we're gonna come down to hue and saturation. And let's go back to effect, color correction, and we're gonna pick curves. Okay, so we want those two. So hue and saturation affects the colors, but also helps us to uh, get the right settings that we want. And then curves affects the uh, pretty much everything, uh, the colors and the light and shadows, okay? Now, um, there's another option in here too, but we'll save it for another video that I'm gonna bring in. So the first thing is is master uh, saturation here. Now what that does is that if you move it to the right, the slider, you'll see that the colors get more vibrant, okay? So if your uh, intent is to make this a little more friendly or uh, more uh, family friendly or for kids, bringing it uh, up higher like this would enhance these colors more. As you can see here, it got very brighter uh, or just brighter. And you can, you know, if you go all the way up, it gets really intense. You don't want any of that, okay? <laughs> That's too much. And if you go the opposite way, it'll turn black and white all the way to the end. So where it says negative 100, uh, it goes straight black and white. So that's a really fast way to do a black and white um, video if you need to do that. Now, uh, I'm not gonna go all the way that low. If I go back to zero here, if you ever make a mistake on any of these effects, you have an option to reset. So if I'm like down here and I forget where to put this, just hit reset and I'll go back to this original setting. So uh, I wanna just bring it down and remove some of that color there, going towards the gray, but not completely. Now, um, the reason I wanna do this is because as uh, I wanna do like a sunset, the sun is setting um, and it's it's uh, it's not as bright as it is. It's, it's gonna start changing color. It's gonna start feeling more uh, along the lines of oranges and, but at the same time, the light is dimming. So it's gonna get darker. Now, right here under curves, what I wanna do is um, we're gonna pay attention to this part here where it says channel RGB. We have different options here. Well, first, we're gonna leave it on RGB. And you see this line right here. If I grab the point here and move it down, you see it starts to darken everything. Okay, see that? Move it down like that. Okay. If I go all the way down, it'll go straight to black. Okay, but I wanna put it like right about there, just darken it some more. But to, um, as you can see here, it kinda of like darken everything. Now this part here, this graph is called the curves. And we can actually click anywhere on the long, along that line and you can start manipulating it a little bit more. Now, as you make a curve, you can see here, it starts getting a little washed out. If you come down this way, those dark shadows start to pop up a little bit more, which is something I want. Oh, and then if you make another curve, you can actually start getting those shadows to darken some more, but at the same time, we are kind of like isolating some of those br little bright whites in there, okay? We need to um, enhance those whites a little bit more later. But we're gonna come back here and go to red, okay? Now we're gonna change red and we're gonna move that down. Now, where you change that will determine the color that uh, the final output will be. So if I go down, you can start seeing it's, gonna, it's making a little more green. If I go even further down, it goes way green. If I move it over to this side here, sorry, over here, the whole thing turns red. That's not what we want. We want it to just get to some place where it feels like it's more sunset. So something like that. Now be careful with this. You don't want to overdo it because we have more options here, right? We have three more. And now uh, we're not going to change anything on the alpha, just on the uh, red, green, and blue. Now the reason you don't want to do too much is because when we change the other ones, we will start adding to that. So we got to be careful with how much we put to it. Let's uh, let's go over to green again. If you uh, move it from the top part, so you can see what happens. It starts turning to more of a magenta color but I actually wanna go a little bit down this way. Somewhere, add some like yellow in there. Uh, somewhere along that line here. 
all right and then we go to blue and here's the blue and you can see that the blue as you go down adds more yellow if I go more over here it starts adding more blue okay so I want to find a spot where it has more yellow and then you can play with the other ones to get I'm looking for an orange color overall we don't want to do like an overlay or a color overlay we want just to manipulate the colors within the footage to give us the illusion that it's a different time of day than it originally was and so you can mess with it right about there I think it's pretty good and maybe mess with the overall color as well okay so that seems okay let's go back up to hue saturation and again let's maybe change the uh, hue the saturation a little bit more up or down you decide which one looks best for you okay if you're ever curious on how this all looks from compared to the original you can always just uh, close these little options here but if you hit the FX it will turn it off okay and that was that's the original you can see the huge difference between the two. All right, so this has more of a sunset type of feel. We need to do one more thing just to help out with, and this is what I was mentioning earlier about the whites. So if you go to effect and we go to uh, color correction, we're gonna go to levels, but individual controls right here. Okay, so there was two options. It was, let me go back. Control, uh, color control, color correction, sorry levels and then levels individual control okay um excuse me drink some water <clears throat> excuse me and so um you have just like in photoshop it works the same way uh this arrow here this first one controls the brightness of the whites so you can see that the whites right there are getting a little bit more interesting and then this arrow back here will darken the blacks now we don't need to darken that too much it's pretty dark as well this slider down here does the overall look so if we slide that you can see that it turns kind of like a washed out color we don't want that and same way the other way it kind of gets like a little darker gray we don't want that uh the one in the middle does the midtones, and that kind of like helps us to balance everything so right there so when we hit play on this now now it look, went from a bright sunny day to kind of like sunset So we did a little change of day there. And that's it. And that's how we do that. And then we'll go ahead and render this as uh, we need it for whatever project we're working on. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with another video. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to bring in this cars video and throw it on my composition. Now, this is kind of like, I would say maybe 5 o'clock in some place uh, if you watch the video uh, we have cars here with uh, lights on and they're bright enough where we can see them they're not being washed off by the day uh, the light from the Sun uh, so it is close to sunset already uh, but we want to go and do the same thing we did before by changing its um, its quality to go from this like early evening to later in the in the evening so uh, we're going to use the same options make sure you have your layer selected effects and we're going to go to color control hue saturation and we'll get all three uh, color correction curves and effects color correction levels individual controls okay um there's a little bit more to this than just the sliders because we have uh, these options here that's why it's called individual controls um, now going back to the top again let's lower the quality of the saturation again if you go all the way to the left it becomes black and white if you go all the way to the right it becomes intense in color so we don't want that we want somewhere below going into like negative 14 right about there and just so you know this slider here does kind of like uh, very similar to the levels one um, I want to bring out down everything a little bit more and notice that uh, it's kind of like just working on the shadows uh, coming back over here since this is going to be later in the evening I'm shooting for blue okay so blue is the overall look 
that we want. And so I want to bring this down. Okay, the first RGB option in the channel. So it does everything. And then we'll go to red. And I'm going to head maybe a little bit towards green right there. Okay, bring it down. Then go to green. Do the same thing. That's kind of getting to where I want it to be already. Not that low. And then blue. And blue, we're going to find the right spot. Maybe more or less right there. Okay. Now we're going to come back down to our levels and we're going to enhance the brightness so those flashlights, I'm sorry, those headlights can get a little bit brighter and move the other side as well, make it a little bit darker. And the midtones, play with the midtones, see, see where you want it to be. Uh, somewhere like along there could work. And maybe make it a little bit darker. Um, now the question is why would I do this? Why would I need to change the uh, the lighting or the video to make it look uh, like another time of day? Well, the reason is is because uh, filming at night is can be difficult. Um, the main problem when filming at night is not necessarily the light itself, but this noise, this graininess that appears in the video. So. If you were to take your phone and go film at night anytime, you'll see that there's like these little particles floating around all along the video. That's called noise or grain, and um, it, it just ruins the quality of the film. So if you watch some movies, what they do is that they actually film in a brighter location and then do something like what we're doing right, right now to make it look more like night or sometimes, uh, you know, another time of day like we did in the previous video. So that's what that would do. So when you hit play this, you can see this now what I need to do here is uh, I want to like make these a little bit brighter so coming back to this curve right here okay this one here this first RGB we can make sure it's there uh, play with that a little bit that curve and help to enhance uh, those headlights a little bit more come back to your levels now this is where we're going to use the uh, get rid of the RGB um, the individual control so then you can go ahead and just maybe focus on just some aspect of that and lower that quality a little bit more there and raise the gamma uh, one of the best things to do while you're learning After Effects or any other software it, it could be it doesn't have to be After Effects alone but it could be um, just tweaking you know figuring out what's the best one to look like and so at some point I'm like like this and like ah that's too dark Okay, so what I can do is just hit reset here, and it'll put it back to something earlier. Okay, or if I undo that, go back to where it was. If I turn off my uh, effects, I can see like I can toggle between like, oh, what's wrong with that? That's too dark. Uh, if I don't like it at all, I could just delete it. Okay, but if I hit reset here, and then just start over, and try to get back where it was, somewhere along those lines there. Okay. Now, uh, what we would normally do in something like this is that we wouldn't rely on just these options here. I'm doing a very quick uh, version of this. But what I would do is um, even rotoscope or enhance these headlights a little bit more. Okay, But when you watch it all like that now, it gets close to what a night scene would look like. Okay, so That guy will probably get a ticket because he doesn't have his lights on. And that's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's that. Let me go back to my um, bin and my build this. And uh, one last thing I want to show you uh, before I end this video is uh, to isolate some colors. Um, in this video here, it's of a caterpillar, and I'm going to bring it into my um, composition settings. I have a caterpillar here. There's actually two of them, and they're munching on this uh, leaf here. And um, and sometimes in videos. Uh, especially if you're doing something that's um, like a demonstration or educational, you, you want to isolate some things. Um, so uh, some caterpillars can be poisonous, and their their markings will indicate that. And so sometimes when you see something very colorful, that's a sign to stay away from it because it's poisonous. Uh, so if you're showing something that uh, would want to enhance just the yellow parts, we can do something uh, pretty cool. And it's a very simple little uh, procedure. So we go to effects, color correction, and we go to leave color. Okay. And so leave color, we're going to use this little eyedropper and click on that. And we're going to select the yellow right there. 
Now nothing's changed because I have to do some tweaking. And if you see here, uh, I can remove where it says amount to decolor. I can remove everything but that yellow. So notice how I'll we'll zoom in so because you won't see it there. But here, there's the if I put this back to zero. Okay, there's the original color. And since I selected it, it's leaving everything that's yellow. Okay, so um, some some things on the leaf might have yellow in it, uh, so they may stay. But if I go all the way to 100, it leaves everything black and white, and leaves the yellow there. Now notice that there's like a little rim around it. It's not where it's supposed to be. So if I put this back to zero, you see that the yellow goes all the way to the black right there. Okay. Let's put this all back to 100. You can see right there, there's a little rim right there. So if we go to tolerance, you can enhance that just a little bit. You don't want to do too much because it'll bring this back. See that? So there's yellow in that leaf. All right. So you just got to find a nice uh, spot. You can see where exactly that color in the leaf is gone. And um, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was before. It's closer to it. And what's great about this is that you're able to isolate those colors very easily and you can demonstrate that this killer caterpillar, I don't know if it's poisonous or not, but um, in a documentary, you can you can say that, you know, the yellow markings is a sign that uh, this caterpillar is poisonous. Uh, there's also another option here called edge softness. And what they'll do is just feather out a little bit. But again, you got to be careful of how much you do that. So you got to find the right little sweet spot right there. So it's like one for me on that video. Okay, and so that's uh, a little bit of uh, color grading and or color correction. It's very important to do. Um, as I said, like you create an, a look for um, your video, where, whether it's to tell a story or just to enhance the quality of the image. Um, either way, it's a, a very easy uh, procedure to do. Uh, the, one of the main things to do is to just test out every little bit of, um, of of all the options there, all the little tweaks. So if you could go back to FX color correction, I mean, you have all of these options here. You have vibrance, you have uh, shadow, you have a lot of these uh, color balance is very important. You have all of these things to enhance the color. So uh, try them all out, uh, tweak them, um, and see what you can do. All right. So that's it for this video, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.